It is now 5.30. Several firefighters are still recovering after a crash involving their fire truck in Anderson County. You'll hear from one of the witnesses. A Central Kentucky father grieves after his teenage son is killed in a car accident. And Lexington police say they have caught another male thief. But of those stories and more, and breaking news as it happens, coming up on WKYT This Morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Hello there, good morning and welcome. Good to have you with us on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Welcome in. Happy to have you here. Tis the season for a lunch of Chex Mix. That's what I had yesterday because it's my favorite holiday treat. <laughs> and readily available this time of year, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, here we are a week until Christmas Eve and it's uh, turning out to be, looks like an active weather pattern after several mm. days of sort of been calm, just the clouds. Let's check in with Micah right now in our First Alert Weather Center. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, we're looking on Defender this morning, seeing a few flakes back toward the east and even a few flurries flying around the region too. It's nothing that's going to make an, a major impact there on your morning commute. Nonetheless, we have a couple more snow impacts coming in the upcoming days. We'll talk over that in just a few minutes. But right now, 33 there in Frankfurt. We're in the 30s everywhere you look. With the clouds laying around, that's where you can get some of those flurries and flakes flying around. It'll be a cold one though. Does not look good. We go from 32, 33 degrees this morning. The 36 by the afternoon. Not much changing. And then we look toward tomorrow, our next snowmaker. Then Saturday, even a better snowmaker is what it looks like as of right now. We'll go over the latest forecast with those events coming up in just a few minutes. All right, and here's the latest from WKYT News. We're tracking the investigation this morning into an accident that has sent some Anderson County firefighters to the hospital. Witnesses tell us their fire truck ran off the road and crashed into a tree. This happened at Puckett Road, to be exact. Sean Moody at the live desk with the latest information on the crash. Well, good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Kentucky State Police are handling this crash. We're told six firefighters had to go to the hospital. People who live along Puckett Road said they heard the crash around 6:30 last night. They say the fire truck went off the road into a ditch and then slammed into a tree, uprooting it. We're told the firefighters were from Station 2 in Anderson County and were on their way to help another crew out at a crash. The man who owns the property where the truck crashed said the firefighters sitting on the passenger side had to be cut from the truck. He said six of them had to go to the hospital. Now, there's no word this morning on how those firefighters are doing. At the live desk, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you very much. Lexington police are still looking for a burglar who trashed a family's home and stole several items. One of the homeowners tells us that someone broke out a window yesterday and left out the back door. This was at her home on Pinewood Court. Uh, but the, not before the burglar went through and ransacked the home and stole a gaming system and cash. Tis the season for crooks. With Christmas less than two weeks away, you could... Odds are, be a target for male thieves. A lot of that happening. Lexington police have arrested another male thief. This is the second time this month. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel is live now with more on the latest theft. Whitney, good morning. Good morning. Police say William Davis stole a FedEx box from the front porch of a Lexington home. When officers got to Davis's home, they reportedly saw that package when he opened the front door. Police say he was also caught on video actually stealing the package. Now, with Christmas about a week away now, Grinches have been stealing deliveries from doorsteps all across the country. Some people have even started installing security cameras to catch the thieves, like in this case. Of course, that isn't always an option for everyone. So to make sure your presents actually make it under the tree this year, here are a couple of tips. Post office managers say the first line of defense is to talk to your letter carrier and let them know if there's a different place where your package should be left. You should also consider safe places where your gifts could be delivered. A lot of people just have them mailed to their place of work. You can also have packages mailed to a neighbor or relative who you know will be home during the day. UPS has a signature required option, so your package doesn't end up in the wrong hands and they also recommend buying insurance on your deliveries which is usually pretty cheap. Now as for Davis, he is charged with theft of mail matter and he will be arraigned on that charge this afternoon. Live in Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. 
A central Kentucky father tells us he's dealing with an unimaginable loss, the death of his teenage son. 17-year-old Colton Burris died Saturday after investigators say his truck flipped over an embankment near Sadieville. He was a student at Harrison County High School and a member of the junior ROTC program there. Those who knew him say he wanted to go to college and join the military. His father works in law enforcement and says he's seen many car crashes over the year, but he says nothing could prepare him for losing his son. I've cried enough tears to float this room. It's, he was an only child, and from the time he was born, he and I, we hit it off just like no other. Well, he also says he's finding comfort in family and his son's friends. Colton's visitation will be from 5 until 8 tonight at Ware Funeral Home in Cynthiana. The funeral will be Saturday. 5.36 now on WKYT this morning. We're tracking the investigation this morning into the death of a coal miner in western Kentucky. The State Division of Mine Safety says 34-year-old Eli Eldridge was hit by a coal hauling car yesterday morning at the Patriot Coal Highland No. 9 mine in Union County. He later died from his injuries. The mine is closed while authorities investigate. This was the second mining death in Kentucky this year. Another miner was killed in October. Well, a third person's been charged in connection to a shooting outside an eastern Kentucky Walmart. Manchester police say they arrested 78-year-old Delmar Edwards Monday. He's been charged with first-degree assault. Last week, police say Michael Edwards and Richard Lawson got into an argument in the parking lot of the Manchester Walmart. Police say Lawson was punched and kicked before Edwards shot him. Lawson suffered serious injuries. Police charged Edwards with attempted murder and assault. They also charged Ashley Bray with assault in the case. A couple who who admitted to a kickback scheme with an Eastern Kentucky judge executive has been sentenced, and according to our news partners at the Lexington Herald Leader, Kenneth and Ruth Gamble both received home detention with two years probation. Investigators say Morgan County Judge Executive Tim Conley steered work to the Gamble's construction company in exchange for $100,000 in kickbacks. This happened during the recovery from the 2012 tornado there. Conley has also pleaded guilty. A Lexington Theater will not be showing a controversial film following recent information leaked from Sony hackers. The theater chain Carmike Cinemas decided Tuesday to cancel showings of the interview after Sony hackers. Well, they've threatened theater goers. The comedy depicts an assassination attempt against North Korean leader Kim Jong un. It's set to be released on Christmas. As for the threat, hackers posted it on a website called Pastebin, yeah, Pastebin, that is yesterday. Uh, hackers claiming to be guardians of peace promised a, quote, bitter fate to anyone going to see the movie. They even referenced the terrorist attacks of September 11th. The FBI is now investigating. We're learning new information about the police officer involved in the Eric Garner chokehold death in New York. It turns out Officer Daniel Pantaleo had a, a trail of civil rights cases levied against him. He's named in four lawsuits, two of which settled for an unknown amount of money. One man says the officer strip searched him in public. Two other men say they were falsely arrested. The Garner case could still turn into a federal or civil case against the officer. Back in Kentucky, a Clay County woman is in jail today after she got caught shoplifting during a shop with a cop event. Manchester police say Samantha Henson was caught hiding merchandise under her clothing at the Walmart there in town. She's been lodged in the Clay County Detention Center. Some drivers in Laurel County say Christmas came early this year after gas prices dipped below $2 a gallon there. So many people stopped by one gas station, the pump stopped working. Prices dropped to $1.99 a gallon at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And a worker at one station said that four hours later they were so low on gas the pumps were malfunctioning. It's been slammed all day long. I mean, it's been a madhouse. You've heard of Black Friday at Walmart's, and it's been a Black Tuesday here. According to AAA, the average gas price in Kentucky is around $2.53. Gas has dipped to around $2.13 here in Lexington. Remember, you can find the cheapest gas prices where you live by going to WKYT.com. It was one of their biggest assignments of the year, but it didn't involve any tests nor classroom work. Instead, students at a Louisville school helped feed orphans in Africa. Hundreds of students, along with teachers and staff at the Academy at Shawnee, packed meals for the orphans. Their goal, 100,000 meals in one day. The school ended up beating its goal. Students and teachers packed 104,000 meals. Vegetarians beware, a new bacon-themed restaurant is soon to open up in the Louisville area. 
area, a new neighborhood bar in Jefferson Town is focusing on all different kinds of bacon, turkey bacon, beef bacon, even duck bacon. Anne Marie's Bacon Bar had to close early yesterday because they ran out of food. The owner describes the restaurant as Southern Farm to Table. The restaurant's grand opening is expected in early 2015. Another